So let's check out this uh, Swiss self-driving uh, bus right here, the Sebit. There's no driver. Has 11 passengers. Thank you. Hey. Hi. Can I do an interview with you? Hello? Uh, yes, my yeah. colleague is coming, so she replaced right. me. All right. So, so basically, you just guide, right? You're just guiding and showing it off. So, hello. Hi. So, who are you? My name is Ramon Müller. I'm working for Postpass in Switzerland. And uh, what are we looking at here? This is a smart shuttle. It's electric, self-driving. Is that correct? That's 100% correct, yes. So this is a smart shuttle. Yeah. And it's 100% electric and 100% self-driving. 100% electric, 100% self-driving. It can have 11 people. Is it real? Like, uh, I see it's from Switzerland. Is it, from, uh, is it really in use or just a demo? Yes, if you look around, you see all these nice images we have brought to you. Yeah. They are from Switzerland. In Sion, you see images from our daily operation, for example. This here. is daily, this is yes. real. Yes, yes. We operate on public roads in the city of Sion, Switzerland. That sounds cool. That sounds really cool. So what's the technology in there? If you can try to describe. It has uh, cameras in the front. It has a uh, LiDAR. You can see on the back three LiDAR sensors. The one on the top yeah. is a, a Velodyne, Velodyne 360 LiDAR sensor. And on the lower part of the vehicle, you can see two six sensors. So it has LiDAR and uh, some other sensors and is developed by a Swiss or French or who made this one? No, no, the vehicle has been developed by a French startup. Uh, the name is Navia. And uh, we bought four vehicles from Navia. Two are operating on public roads in Switzerland and two are uh, traveling around the world for demonstration purpose, like here at Civit. So if I go to Sion and I want to watch football yes. at the stadium, this will stop near the stadium? <laughs> the Tourbillon, because I saw it was saying Tourbillon, right? That's what I remember is the name of the stadium. Is that the area of Sion? Uh, or? Tourbillon is the name of uh, a castle in Sion. So, uh, the vehicle stops near this castle in Sion. And uh, how many people are using it? Since when are you driving around with this one? So in Sion we have uh, per week uh, about 500 people in the shuttle. Tourists, but also locals who use the shuttle every day. But there's no accident? It's just perfect? It's just going smooth? It's a test. And we also discover some issues. Some, uh, we had one accident. Uh, we call it incident, where we uh, crossed uh, a parked car with an open uh, back door. And this back door was very hard to see, also for the operator. So uh, there were some circum uh, many circumstances leading to the f fact that the vehicle crushed into this uh, open door of this uh, That's vehicle. fine. As long as it's not a dog or a cat or something, <laughs> yes. then not. Nobody was hurt. Nobody was hurt. So let, let me try to go closer to there to see. Is it gonna be able to see me on the road and avoid me? So you can now film me how I stop the vehicle, eh? just with yeah. my mind, okay? Just no. with your mind. <laughs> There's no driver, nothing. No. You just push the button to do the route, right? So I'm gonna think about stopping the vehicle now. It stops. Cool. Okay. That's cool. So it says uh, car postal. Uh, yes, it, does yes, it have yes. to do with the uh, Swiss uh, post office? Yes, you know, we have a, a business in Switzerland. This is Postpass Switzerland, but we also have uh, a business in uh, France. This is car postal France. So we don't uh, only operate in Switzerland. We have in Switzerland 2,200 buses and about 900 buses in uh, France. And uh, what's the cost to operate something like this compared to paying a driver to drive around and uh, oil yeah. and today it potentially it's in five, ten years it's paid off? Uh, you know, today as we use a security driver on the shuttle, it's uh, about the same cost as a normal bus. But in future, if we manage to get the, rid of the security driver because uh, you know the law has to change and we need a, uh, permission to do that on open roads then it will be the cost will be lower but you know we also have other 
uh, jobs created around this product because we have also an uh, operating base where we have a control center with people uh, working there and also we need people for maintenance. And all you guys. And all us to develop the system. Which is actually a cool job you have. You're going around the world showing it off and saying, hey, everybody should get this kind of stuff. Sure. So this is like uh, the cool kind of uh, entrepreneurial spirit and, and engineering and stuff. And uh, Navia is a startup? Yes, that's right. Navia is a French startup. Is this the first, the first product? Uh, we bought vehicle number three and four from them and now they're ramping up. So uh, yeah, we are in a very exciting uh, stage of this project. Nice, I'm gonna try to stop this guy. Okay, cool. Thank you. How about, uh, is there any chance we can jump on, on board, this guy? This, this one is gonna fill up and we can take the next one, yeah, right? Sure. Let's go and look how it is and feels inside. So how long is the battery life? Well, yesterday we drove about 11 hours on this track and after the service we had still about 70% battery lifetime. That sounds like uh, you can totally drive the whole day and charge at night. Yeah, but it There's depends no on speed, it on the... air condition, if it's on or off. Uh, this, it depends on a lot of factors. All right, let's get the next, the next one. And um, potentially the rides could be free, right? Because nobody's going to check the ticket. It's self-driving. Yes, today it's free, yes. So it's free service, and in theory, there could be a scanner or something. In it future, could, there could be a scanner, you yes. You can measure the weight and say, hey, you bored and you didn't show your ticket. Yeah. You can say, like, could say something like that. How about making bigger ones? Because this one only has 11 capacity. It's possible that in future, we also have bigger ones or smaller ones, yes. Okay, let's try to get on into one. Yeah, uh, it's going to go on armdevices.net. Actually, I'm, I'm from Switzerland also. And I'll post it on my YouTube. Let's try to board the self-driving bus. Post auto. Bye bye. Congrats. I like your headset. Thank you. Hello. Can I use half the bus again? Yeah, okay, natürlich. let's try. Cool. So it has, uh, it feels like a normal bus. Where's the driver? Nowhere. No driver. <laughs> so you just push the start button and it will start, maybe. Yeah. But please, you, you have to sit down when we okay. ride, please. Hmm? You, will, you will be the driver? Okay, cool. Is it okay you can talk about it on video? Yeah, I will. But um, perhaps not for an official interview. It's okay, not let's me. Let's ask this guy to come. So, uh, I don't know. He is doing yeah. an interview already. Yeah, because it's so, me. So, yeah. you just can perhaps wait for the next tour, but you can already make pictures. So, I just go around. Uh, I don't, I don't speak Deutsch. So. Okay. <laughs> nice. Cool. It's got some cool. Nein, bitte. Nein, nicht. Und äh, okay. es ist so, dass äh, das 
Fahrzeug ist für Kurzstrecken konzipiert. Wir wollen ein Service sein, ein Zubringer, wie es Last First Mile und äh, dorthin fahren, wo die Bussen nicht hinkommen mhm. und auf Kurzstrecken und oft Haltestellen und die kleinen Busse, die oft hintereinander fahren, um die Leute dort zu sammeln und zu größeren Verkehrsmodellen zu bringen. Und hier in der Schweiz waren wir bereits seit ähm, Test, Live Test. Seit, äh, cool, sehr cool. Ja. Nice, so let's see some bigger ones, let's see the, those all over the world, uh, let's see a whole bunch of uh, self-driving electric buses that don't run over any cats and dogs because they have sensors. <laughs> 